when we moved to the bush about 20 odd years ago, um, I walked a lot and so I would pick up small skulls, um, uh, s little snakes that have died, um, lizards, all kinds of things that I could take back into the studio, all kinds of strange um, bits of bush, uh, things like bird's nests, um, strange twigs and roots, they all came back into the studio. So I've got a lot of dehydrated animals, small birds that have dried out, um, rats, mice, lizards and so on. And I found it quite interesting actually uh, working with those because there's an implied having had a life. And I suppose at one stage I, I thought, well, it's kind of nice in a way because I'm actually giving them another kind of life by putting them into one of my paintings or drawings. I think that my work is, uh, is very much autobiographical, both, both by the things that I collect and also, most recently, uh, in the inclusion of my own self-portrait. I'm really interested in trying to understand what I'm drawing very much from my own perspective, particularly for instance, when I'm drawing my own head, I'm looking for something more than just that image we have stare back at us in a, in a mirror. I'm looking for something that is a, a much deeper and psychological sort of um, expression of myself. So I want to know more about me, so I'm doing much more drawing about me at the moment. From the beginning, I'm not quite sure what the work is going to look like. I just start intuitively working. And in the case of derangement, it was very much about drawing inside the studio. I decided I would do some drawings surrounded by all of the objects that are in, in the space. As it went along, of course, I realized that some of those objects are going to cause um, a response. So the, the dehydrated kangaroo has all kinds of connotations that people respond to. Although it was very much about my studio, I had to acknowledge then that anybody who saw it would also respond to those objects and what they're loaded with. And then I thought, well, it's my studio, I need to put me in it. So I decided to put the head in, and I put the head in in this provocative way um, to make it interesting for myself. I'm more interested in uh, candid images of um, people. And so, yeah, so it had to be a screaming or is it laughing head. Um, and I like that ambiguity in the end. I like the fact that it, there's a close similarity between laughter and, and um, the scream. I'll start with an ink wash and uh, map out roughly where I think the objects are going to sit on the page. Once I've done that and that's dried, then I'll start working with compressed charcoal. Um, and strengthening some of the marks. In this area here, for instance, you can see there's a, it's a very thin layer of material. It's, um, I would have started with my uh, ink wash, which is underneath this, probably rubbed in a bit of charcoal, and then it's been sat in either with straight water or an ink wash. In this case, it would have been just with water. Um, and then over the top of this, I've just painted, this is painted ink. Here's the introduction of, of the white pastel. Um, and here you can see that there's a tremendous um, build-up of, of material on here. If I shook the edge of this, some of it would still fall off. The constantly changing of objects or deciding to drop an object out and introduce another one constantly goes on. This bird was moved, for instance. My head didn't come in until much later on. Originally here, I tried, there, was no, there was no object, it just had the baskets. And then I introduced another sculpture and it sat very uncomfortably in the space. So I washed it out with, I rubbed it out first with my hand. Um, I wear gloves when I'm drawing. And then I um, washed water over that so it sat back in. And then I've just used ink to redraw re the bird's head in there. I think I use drawing very much um, as a way of discovering and very much a way of investigating my subject. It's certainly a starting point for me with most things that I get involved in. Everybody, it doesn't matter what uh, practice you have as an artist, you need to at some stage use drawing, even if it's just a, a roughing out and arrangement of things. It's just there's so much importance in the ability to draw. I mean, I. For me, as I said, I hadn't honed those particular skills where I actually had to look and put for years. I hadn't actually used that. Um, I do little rough drawings in my sketchbooks of ideas for paintings or whatever. But I think that um, it's very important to learn to, to look and put. And it's a skill that you'll never lose. You know, it just needs a bit of practice every now and again.